Hi everybody, it's Dawn Gallagher. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. Thank you for subscribing. I am a beauty expert. I like to show tutorials and tips and tricks to make you feel beautiful and to bring out the best in you. And today I am talking with my dear friend Joseph who is a makeup artist, he is a hairdresser, he's also a photographer, he's the real deal. I have known him since the beginning of my career. We True. have worked together many, many, oh many times. We've done catalogs, we've done editorial, we have done, oh my God, advertising. I've been a model for, oh my God, 30 plus years. Great beauty work, we did <laughs> yeah, beautiful great, beauty great Great work today. and so today we're gonna do a complete makeover and really show you tips and tricks on makeup to really bring out the best in you to really enhance your eyes your lips your all the tricks that makeup artists real makeup artists who are um, been in the business forever he's gonna show us step by step so without further ado let's do it let's go. okay okay now the important thing to remember whenever you're sitting down at your mirror in the morning you're not in a makeup mirror in a studio right, right, and people right. are all the glam team yeah. is around you but you're just on your own in your bathroom the important thing to always remember that the, the, the skin care is everything if you don't take care of the surface of your skin everything you put on top is going to get collected in drier areas and the colors are going to be uneven and it's going to frustrate you and you're right. going to say Wash, you're going to wash your face and put everything back in the drawer. Right. And we don't want that to happen. So no. the best thing you can do, and the most important, after you've cleansed, Dawn's beautifully cleansed, yeah. you can see that she's it got It starts a, with good cleansing, oh, right? That's you, like key. Uh, well, always. Yeah. And, and, and that's something you can gauge to your skin type. Yeah. But any esthetician will tell you the most important part of your skin regime is your toner. Remember toners? Everybody's like, and tell oh, us I just why. wash my face and put... Yeah cleanser on. The toner pre uh, returns the skin to the natural pH balance. Yeah. And that signals your skin to adjust to a cold day, a warm day, a humid day, a dry day, indoor heating, outdoor heating, mm -hmm. all of this. Your toner signals your skin by putting in its proper pH balance to adjust to the elements. Right. And I think a lot of women don't they think realize it's, that. They think it's, you know, to, to take oil off your skin uh, or, or it's remove for, makeup you know, like or, the, oh, I, yeah. you know, I gotta burn my skin with t toner in order to um, reduce the possibility of breakouts and mm -hmm. all that no it's pH balance that's all it is so here I have a you know just a cotton pad you can you, you can put it in your hands and just pat it on your face but it's very important to do the toner mm -hmm. and we're just gonna glide it over the face after it's been thoroughly cleansed Mm -hmm. And this returns the pH balance, which gives you an acid mantle, and your skin will send out its natural defense. It's the most important part yeah. of your skin. Isn't regime. that interesting, ladies? People I mean, forgot all about I it. Know, they, they're like, I don't want. What, what's a toner? That's something I used as a teenager yeah. when I had oily skin. Yeah. No, this is the most important thing you can do. But it actually signals defense for your skin. It I, signals that's something defense. I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. It creates the acid mantle. In other words, if you put a good toner on, you, now this is a good toner. You don't want to use something with alcohol in it or mm -hmm. any of those things. No, good toners no. Can, can come um, in really natural products, you know, like um, botanicals. Yeah, are great. I like to use Calendula. witch hazel. I like to use witch hazel. Is that okay? Well, you, you've got to look at the ingredients. There is a slight alcohol content in. in, in Witch hazel, I'm not a big fan. The witch hazel itself, the botanical, yeah, that works I only great. use the botanical. No, but the, if you're using botanical witch hazel, you're spot I'm on. I'm only using The other one natural. I love is calendula. <laughs> calendula, yeah, I've seen I love it that heal too. acne. Mm -hmm. I've seen it because what it does is it builds up the natural defenses in the skin, which then promotes yeah. it to heal itself heal actually imagine mm -hmm. it's not putting everything on top you've got to let the skin do what your body signals it to do now Joseph is this yeah. for women of all ages should be doing a toner oh absolutely yeah. everyone should okay. be doing that so did and you hear that everyone should be using toner? a toner before oh, you do yeah. before your moisturizer use I a toner. don't recommend it to toddlers but <laughs> uh, once you become a teenager you know your skin becomes it's sort of the birth of what it's going to be all your life. Right, right. Well, I'm glad you're saying this yeah. to my audience people because people, people don't, don't understand know. toner. They, a lot of women 
cleanse their face, and then they go right to their moisturizer. But That's I right. think that you're really hitting a point no. that you do need your toner before the moisturizer. And so Absolutely. now we're doing the moisturizer, Absolutely. now that my face is toned. It's basically how nature works. Your body wants to take care of itself. That's so that's exactly why it brings right, it to balance. Don. That's yeah. exactly mm -hmm. what a toner does. Yeah. Perfectly said. Yeah. Now we're ready for a, a nice moisturizer. Now, mm. Don's over 50, so I always have a tendency to be a little bit dry. Uh, now some people are fortunate and they suffered <laughs> oily skin all their life, and then when they hit middle age, they're like, they have gorgeous skin because right. it's been naturally moisturized all their life. Yeah. And I just want to preface one thing for the viewers watching, that th if you're younger, you know, you really want to start taking care of your skin now while you're young. And then when you're older, it's never too late. And that's some of the things we're going to be talking about right now, like Absolutely. how to take care of your skin. Absolutely. If you don't want to... That this is important for all ages. It's Absolutely. not just a certain age. Mm -hmm. Skin care, you start it young. Right, right. You start young with yeah. that. And love your face. It's, it's, yeah. it's you know, it, it, it's something you'll be so pleased with yourself later in life. The first thing people look at is your face. The first, when they're introduced okay, to you. Can I so, just say this? Yeah. You've been taking care of your skin all, mm -hmm. your, all your life. Yeah. This is a woman over 50 people. She's <laughs> stunning. She has beautiful skin. Oh, thank really you. beautiful can you, skin. You can see by looking at the texture and the tone of her face that she's used a lot of sunblock in the sun. She's not over tanned. And Maybe. a lot of it's what you eat too. Make sure you're hydrating well and you're eating right. well because that's a big part of Absolutely. beautiful skincare. Absolutely. There's a lot of vitamins and yeah. food that go straight to the skin. Yeah. Your, your, your skin is the largest organ in your body. Mm -hmm. So that's body. why I always mm -hmm. talk about be careful with those chemicals you put on your face. Really be mindful to read ingredients because the ingredients can be um, really detrimental to your skin. They can be drying, they can, be, they can cause breakouts, irritants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Am I right? So the more natural, the better. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I think I think natural is the future anyway. Yeah. Um, I think we we're, everybody's generating uh, beautiful botanical products. You, uh, yeah. Uh, I yeah. know I am. Yeah. Eventually. Right. <laughs> Coming soon. To, yeah. <laughs> to, <laughs> to a theater near to you. To a website near you. Okay. Yeah. Let's so get, let's so. go this moisturizer. Mm -hmm. I, I love moisturizer because my skin is very dry, so I want it to. I love when it soaks now, when in. I work with when I work with a, a model, I like to just dot it in. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do this at home, you know, so that you know you get an even distribution. I even love that you do this like a little face massage to get, oh, give yeah. the energy. Oh, no. Little energy to the well, face. Well, you know, when we wake up in the morning, which is oftentimes when people are doing makeup, we've got a little water left in our face. And, we, you yeah. know, we, this is one way you can do it. Just give yourself a little massage. Push on those. This is where all it's like the tension. like acupressure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. This is where all the tension is stored in the face, mm. right in here. Mm. So I like to really get in there. I can feel it. I can feel what what it's doing. Mm -hmm. It's releasing tension, and it's moving a little of the of the water that settles in our face when we sleep. You know, everybody wakes up and. And they feel just like a little water, like a little mm -hmm. puffy under the yeah. eyes. Yeah. Uh, the, all those things are just a natural occurrence during the night. It's actually very good, you know, because it is bringing water to the face. Mm -hmm. But w when we're massaging that, you actually can push some of that water out. Oh, so you can actually push the water. Just, and it's move a very it. slight. Yeah. But I wouldn't do a makeup. This is prepping a girl for a camera. Yeah, this is prepping this it for is like a photo it all shoot. For yeah. a photo shoot, you really want to push. You start in here and you push just under the bone. There's so many nerve endings in there. So for ladies, for a photo shoot, you might want to try this because this is bringing a lot of energy to oh, your face and blood. too. And blood. Blood. That so circulation is mm -hmm. rushes to the surface, gives you a more even complexion, mm -hmm. which is always important. Less makeup, uh, you know, you use less makeup to even out the complexion. Mm -hmm. Just anything that br brings blood to the surface is very, very beneficial. Mm -hmm. That's great. Feels so now good, our, right? our face is now prepped. How's that feel? Oh, that feels amazing. You know, and it gives you, even if it's 30 seconds of, of you to just kind of go out, it's a wonderful way to relax yourself. You know, people act like, oh, I got to get in and I got to get out. It's up, it's over, it's out. Makeup, it, 
it doesn't really take as much time as you think. So go through these steps. Don't skip steps. It doesn't take, and it, it, it's time you give yourself. So now my skin is ready and prepped for the next step. So we have a beautiful glow on the skin. But I see we need a few of those uh, strays. Uh, Got a few yeah. strays. Now Dawn has. So now we're doing brows. We are? That's the next, right after you have your skin prepped, we're going to start with Absolutely. brows. Absolutely. Yeah. And now why can't, here's a question for yeah. you, Joseph. Why can't we pluck right after the shower? Isn't our, our pores are too open? It's painful? Because us ladies, you know, we like to pluck our eyebrows when it's it, not it's, as it's, painful. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I absolutely understand what you're saying. My point would be that if you're spending a lot of time on your brows after you've come out of the shower and your skin is full of water, it's going to begin to dry out. So one of the good things to do, as we said, is tone it and moisturize it. And then you can work on your face and you know that you're ready for the elements of any kind. Right. Okay. So I'm seeing a few strays here. Now Dawn has really beautiful eyebrows, as you can see. She's well, never over plucked. Oh. It's, a, it's a beautiful arch. It's been done very well and probably by a lot of professionals. And she learned a lot along the way. But the strays down here, we want to get rid of. Now, I want to talk a minute about brows because I think a lot of people have over plucked their brows. They're sad about it. They're not growing back in. Well, they overpluck their brows too because in magazines it shows right. well, that the whole trends thing, came trends around trends and come oh my and god, go. 1990 yeah. almost obliterated the brow. <laughs> exactly. And when you you said, okay, well, I want to have my brows back because brows do give you a younger look. Um, they frame your face. They it, it requires less eye makeup and. Um, you know, there's a lot of things about keeping keeping the brow a little bit on the generous side, as mm -hmm. opposed to a thin line. Now, if you plucked your eyebrows out and they haven't grown back in, but they grow below and above with a big strip in between, you want to get as close to a beautiful shape as possible. Just because you're afraid to tweeze your brows doesn't mean you shouldn't still groom them. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. do the best you can. Get as close. So in, in Dawn's case, we've got some down here. And we just want to pull those out. Very easy. No problem. I'm just cleaning empty space. I'm not going near that shape. Mm -hmm. and, and you see, there might there's even a little peak here where it didn't fill in. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's ones on each side. That's very easy to fill in with cosmetics. So there's hope. Oh, well, <laughs> for there's the, the women who fell The hope is learning how to put a beautiful touch of eyebrow pencil. They have beautiful felt tip yeah. uh, eyebrow correctors that look like little hairs going in. It's a, yeah. it's a little bit of an art, but hey, I think there's an artist in everyone. Yeah, excellent. You know? And the women will like to experiment right. and try different things, so we'll be showing some of that stuff I you I think use. the thing that I see more often is when they've overplucked and they're just afraid to touch their brows. They're mm -hmm. like, I, I don't care, I'm getting, and they've got brows growing all the way down to here, but they don't want to touch them because they've had a bad experience. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to keep grooming and, and keep that keep that nice area clean in here. It keeps the eyeshadow from being stuck in it. Mm -hmm. It keeps it, it, it just gives you a little bit more of a base. And another thing And it that, gives you a lift, right? Oh, a little bit of a lift. Brows do talk they, they they speak to the eyes. Yeah. They really are like I love that. They're buddies. <laughs> they have you know, a conversation like, hey, with how you. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So Yeah, exactly. And another mistake that a lot of people make mm -hmm is they don't understand, and then this is an easy mistake to make because you can't see this peripheral area. So I see a, a one here that I'd like to pull out, and all that's doing is, is lifting it out, lifting it out, everything lifting out, and make sure that that's nice and clean. And, that, and that's really where a lot of people, you'll have this beautiful shape and then there'll be all these hairs down in here. Go ahead and clean those out, especially a woman of a certain age. Yeah. It really looks like, a, like you, an eye lift when the brows are going in the right and I'm, direction. And I'm really glad you said that because I don't think people realize that if you pluck your eyebrows a certain way, you know, under mm -hmm. here, that it can make you look so much younger. I have seen women who have had their eyebrows done mm -hmm. the correct way, and it actually took years because it lifted this whole oh, area yeah. so yeah. much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, there are a lot of music that you can go into a salon and you can have threading done. Right. Somebody will wax it and then work on the line with a tweezer. 
you got to be careful. You've got to have some trust. That's yeah. a trust yeah. factor. Right, okay? right. Be very careful. But those of you ladies that have overplucked your brows and just are afraid to touch them, it's so often that I have to kind of coax them into letting me groom it and make yeah. it look really like something that, okay, yeah, there's a few spaces, but I'd rather fill in that space underneath than to have to deal with brows that are all the way down in here. So don't be afraid to, mm -hmm. even if you've overplucked and they're not growing back, you, there are means, there is cosmetics, pencils, yeah. shadows, um, uh, the felt tips are my favorite. Right, right. Just to, to, to begin to rebuild a brow. One of my favorite is the felt tip. It's a very translucent, pale color. Yeah. So it gives you the look of individual hairs, and um, it, can fill in it. Those, it can fill in those spots. Now, yeah. Dawn has a very beautiful brow here, but I can see in both cases, this has never come back in. This is the day of over... Over plucking. Over arching. I've done that, I baby. It, I've yeah. over plucked and over, because in the arching. 90s, we were over arching. So with the felt, tip you can just lightly fill in from underneath where there might be you because the most beautiful action to the eye and I always say brows give a woman a little more authority when they're too thin you look like you don't know where you're going <laughs> when you have a beautiful brow you look straightforward you you're, you're taking on the world so one of one of the tricks to get that is to just make sure that when you're dealing with the shape of your brow that there's a straight line right in there and that already gives her eye more authority so the reason that I love the felt tip is it's very translucent. So it gives you a great base for building a brow where you might have some empty spaces. I like to just lay it on, let the bone tell me where it's, go where it's gonna work the best. Starting on this side, same thing. Just straight to the arch line, straight up. And you can see now she has beautiful authority to her eyebrows. And we just started now. Thank you. I like that. <laughs> Giving me authority you by fixing my brows. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Another tool, and I like these to be retractable. I, I don't like to sharpen yeah. pencils. Um, it's not necessary. Maybe for lips and eyes, it's good to sharpen because it's a way of getting rid of any yeah. old you know residue on residue there. Yeah, and whatever. you start fresh you start yeah. clean eyebrows with a retractable are very very handy because mm. first of all it's a very fine tip be almost yeah. impossible Get, they allows you to have a finer tip because it's retractable now this is a very uh, pale brown we've got a we've got a kind of a blonde brown sunlit brown hair color so we don't want to go dark with the brows we want to stay a little bit on the paler side mm -hmm. especially since we're filling now what i love to do is just continue in this fashion always going the direction that the hair grows so usually everyone in the middle where the brow starts it's always growing up under here it grows up on the arch, you begin to brush it down and you see that the, the growth of the brow actually is growing down. So that's where you want to see, if you're going to, when you go into your arch, mm -hmm. you want to start doing downward strokes. Oh, that's a very important to know. Absolutely. I think and a lot of women don't know that. I do downward strokes in here to fill this area in. It won't, it, it gives you a, a softer, more natural effect than say if I were to brush it up and try and get this brush, it, this pencil in with that, mm -hmm. it, I'm, I'm always going to miss my mark. Wow. And my mark here is where that brow, you see where all the brows are growing in. I like to put those strokes in there. They're invisible when you brush the, brush the brow up and you can see the difference. See, ladies, I think this is a great tip. Yeah, yeah. Brush the brow down and yeah. do your strokes. This is for the. This is not for the underneath shape. This is for the top shape. And stroke that. See how that's just going to fill that in. This is just going to fill that in from the top. And it also follows. 
this, this is prior to doing the, the finish of it, but it's just going to fill that in there in the direction that the hairs grow. Then when you brush it up, you see how invisible mm -hmm. that effect is, but the shape has been established. It is filled in. So we're in good shape with those brows. And she's, a, she's got a little fuller here, and I think Dawn looks good with a little bit more filled in here. So I'm gonna add a little bit more to that, and that's okay to bring that up. Yeah. And then brush it, brushing, brushing, brushing. Now, not to, uh, the, uh, another tip about tweezing I forgot to mention. A lot of times women have these crazy hairs that they can't control. They got the brush yeah. going, <laughs> They're going like, with the, every fixative yeah, they can yeah. find. I mean, they yeah. practically get super glue out yeah. to get that brow to do what they want. It's because it's been plucked the wrong way. You, uh, an eyebrow is attached to a follicle and it will grow back in, we hope. Yeah. But you always tweeze in the direction that the, you want that brow to lay. You can actually train your brows by tweezing them in the direction because it keeps the follicle in the, uh, growing in the right direction. If you grab an eyebrow and go against it, like take this and pull against it, yeah. I guarantee you when that hair grows back in, it's going to grow the opposite way or it's going to tend to want to come in against the yeah. natural flow of the brow. Right. And that's actually a really effective tip. People should really remember when they're tweezing always go in the direction of the brow. Right, right. And that you can actually train your brows to yeah. grow the way Again, you want them a, to. A nature yeah. saying, if you're it, doing, yes, your body will listen to it what, It will yeah. absolutely listen. You're telling it what yeah. to do. If you yank that follicle the opposite yeah. way, you're going, hey babe, you just, uh -huh. we just put your brow in reverse. <laughs> so I think that looks great. I'm doing that to a step. <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> I my, love Another happy customer. I love it. Yeah, Ooh, right? Those yeah. are good, right? Once we've established that we kind of like the shape of the brow, and the reason that I did the brow before any foundation, which some people are like, why is he doing brows before a foundation? Sometimes I even put lipstick on before a foundation because it has real impact on the face. Yeah. Between the lips and brows, you're kind of set if you want to go fresh and natural with very light eyes, but you've got to have a, a good shape to the brow, a nice authority to the brow. Right. And sometimes I add lip color because I want to see what like, I really need. That's interesting. Yeah, so. everything becomes kind of secondary to that. Because a lot of makeup Although people, mascara, yeah, that's mascara big. is a big one. I think if they stopped making mascara, I think people would start jumping off cliffs. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> but don't. Um, so that's why I start with the brows before any foundation at all. And, and Dawn is not 20, so I really want to be meticulous and careful about how much makeup I use on yeah. her. She wants to just look beautiful. She doesn't want to look made up in the end. All right, so now we're going to start with the, um, some of the problem areas. Um, Dawn, Dawn has a little bit of a, a shadow down here. It's just where it's a natural part of aging. It, it, things tend to drop a little bit, but that's so easy to fix. I know, we, that whole dropping thing. <laughs> oh my God. There's well, nothing you could do about it, but exactly. I mean, except these little tips and tricks, right? <laughs> no, I do have a tip. Yeah. I do have a tip and a trick about concealer. First of all, I like to use a wand because I can get into tight areas. If you're using oh. a cream, definitely use a small brush. Okay. to put the concealer in. Don't just put it on with your fingers. Your finger is taking up way too much area. And if you'll think about it, the real problem lies here okay. and here and not out here. Try to see, like in Dawn's case, if you bring your chin down, you can really see where the problems are. And just completely relax your face okay. and, and look straight. And, that's where you want to lay your concealer. Don't smile. I won't smile. I'm trying to be very straight. I straight. know you uh, are. Okay. And this is where the problem is. Right there, huh? Right there. And if you really focus your um, attention on just where the problem is, 
and you know everybody likes to lift the eye here so you can always add a little here but you can see that in between these two areas where I put the concealer is where some ladies have the, the their lines their, yeah. their laugh lines their smile lines which we love right I love I love lines I'm sorry it shows I'm that you've had a happy it. life I'm not here to cover <laughs> lines and I don't yeah. want to put a lot of makeup under your eyes it's going to cause you to have more lines, right visible lines. right but this little this little bit here just lifts the corner of the eye and that basically, I mean, look, you can get into a little bit of redness around the, around the nostril, mm -hmm. but don't work on any uh, brown marks or anything at this point. Another trick to blending that is to squeeze under the eyes just a little bit. Yeah, you see what that does? It keeps my finger out of the, out of the area. So if we're doing this at home, when yeah, you're tapping... Just, it's a little yeah. squint. You can tap, you can use a little brush. I'm not really blending this. Now relax, because I'm going to do right here, and I don't want to. Mm -hmm. I like to do that relaxed. I'm not real worried about it. I'm not blending this concealer. That's going to happen when I apply foundation. Okay. Now, for over 50 skin, I find liquid foundation that you have to powder down and layer, and you know, tends sometimes they tend to be far too opaque. Right. And sometimes they tend to be too far too sheer. Right. I love it. If you can get away with a tinted moisturizer, more power to you. My philosophy is on foundation. What's that? Less product with more effect. Right. Really key, get huh? what you want, but with the minimal amount of application. And I find that now can I mention this marker? <laughs> yeah, sure. I found this amazing product. Uh, it, you can find it on online. It's called Smart Cover, and there's just something about it that really doesn't require powder, and it covers and it does not get in the lines. That's been the report, and I know I've, uh, Dawn's been trying it out for me, and she absolutely is hooked. Yeah. So I, I'm going to use a shade that's very close to her skin, but not too light. Uh, I think older women tend to start paling up and the reason they do that is because a lot of the makeup that they're using is all full of pigment so they by the end of the day they turn dark would and you I'm, say this for all ages just to get you know just for questioning um, or I, I like it I, I use it I use it on 20 year old models because okay. I just get great photography coverage okay but they get away with a lot less they can handle a liquid foundation they can handle a powder but as you get older, powder is your enemy. And yeah. you would agree with me on I that. I totally would you agree. agree with yeah. me? So anything that would go on your skin that didn't require powder, wouldn't you feel like, wow, okay, yeah. that's my miracle product. Right. This is as good as... Because powder kind of gets in your creases and wrinkles right. and crinkles, and you don't want that. <laughs> right. So I yeah. have a, a, a sponge here. You can get them in any drugstore, and you yeah. just wet them and squeeze all the water out with a paper towel, and you have a beautiful, damp tool here can also be done with a makeup brush. But I find that makeup brushes take a lot of makeup out of your, and you're using up a lot of makeup and you're just washing it out of your brush. Right, right. So what I'm gonna do with what I've got set in here, I've got kind of worked on Dawn's, got that nice concealing going, and I'm gonna ask her to do that squeeze for me again, but not your face, just under the eyes, that's it. And look up when you do that. And do this for yourself. This is a great, and you're yeah. actually encouraging the little, it's like a workout. Oh, what for a, under a the face eyes. workout. Yeah, it's a yeah. face workout. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're just going to tap into that because this is very good coverage, but I'm depositing a minimal amount of makeup. And you can see right away that that just, and the reason I'm asking her to lift is because I want to get into that area that's her problem area, but I don't want to bounce it all around. I just want to concentrate on that one area. Now this will this will cover and blend in one stop. And the reason it does that is because there's a lot of pigment in it. People are like, oh my god, that's it's heavy, it's got a lot of pigment. I found that if it has a lot of pigment, you don't have to use very much to get the effect you want. And yeah. that's the key. And if on top of it you don't need powder. This is a miracle. Yeah. So, less so is I'm just more. gonna continue to tap that around. You know, we want yeah. This is a good shade for Dawn. Gives her a little bit of color. Evening out the redder, ruddier places, and yet not making her look whitish. Yeah. Whitish is not good. Because my pigment tends to run a little red, rosy. Right. So. Yeah. So, I mean, all I'm doing is blending out. 
you know, I've got, I, I've planted a little bit of concealer by the nose so you don't have to press a lot of makeup into that. You know, just, you can see that it's almost touch and go. It's really touch and go. It really is, evens out the oh, skin tone. and instantly. And yeah. believe it or not, and, and I think she'll tell you when I'm back, this does not feel like you're wearing anything. Yeah. This is real. And I'm, it's and not you, heavy. It's no, not and you can see that I'm tapping it in. I never rub or pull the face with makeup. Never. It's, it's just so counterintuitive to me. It's like we're trying to... We're trying to do something lovely and lifted here. Yeah. And people are pulling on their face and with a tuggy. sponge. Yeah. So just do a light tap. And this doesn't require powder. That's the big key. Would you say, Don? Yeah. Who when you if you think you have to pick up a powder brush, now that's different when you're yeah. doing television. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're gonna get some powder. Yeah. But so you don't when you're sweating. In daylight, yeah. when you're walking, you're shopping, and you just yeah. want to do a quick touch on yourself and to feel like you've kind of evened out your skin. Maybe yeah. you're having a breakout. Maybe it's winter, and we yeah. all turn that funny color. Yeah. <laughs> this is the way. This is the way to do it. Now, especially the winter when you're like pasty. Oh yeah. yeah. And it doesn't get in the line. And I was going to say, especially for the woman over 40, uh, 50, 60, less is more, right? You don't want to put that pancake makeup on your face. You want to just have that coverage, but just light. Well, the, here's the misconception. Yeah. They think this is a pancake. This is a, they think a heavy makeup. I like heavy makeup, but I just don't use it very much. Yeah. So and and the level. more you tap, the more you're just blending. I mean, it's all about blending, blending, blending tapping, blending, blending, tapping. This is one place I recommend blending the makeup down. It's just under the chin because it never gets the sun. So it's always really pale there. And if you matched your face to this, it would be too whitish. I like when, as a woman gets older, she yeah. has a little bit of a tawny glow. I think it's a mistake to go white. Yeah, I agree. on the face. And I like that you're blending this part too, because like you said, if this is different than this, right. it looks two-tone. Right. Tone. right. <laughs> like you have now, two different colors. Because I'm a makeup artist, these are I'm I'm, I'm just going to do things the way I do that. Yeah. And look up for me. Now I'm going to this, and, and the girls love this. You can squeeze a little for me. Yeah, I love that squeeze because then I don't feel like I'm pushing skin around. The thing to understand about your fingertips when it comes to blending around the eyes. Your fingertips are warmer than your face temperature. And makeup is designed to set at face temperature. But you have more warmth in your fingertips. So you can actually move it. You can redistribute and re-blend with the heat of your fingers. And you also, in a tapping motion, this makes it look, end up looking very, very natural. And you know, it keeps it from going into the areas where you don't need it. It, most women don't need makeup where their lines are. It's a common mistake. Well, they think they have to cover it. There's no reason to yeah. cover that. Now, just to finish off, because I feel like this looks fantastic, just to finish off, I'm just going to do one dab under each eye, right where I started. Some people put their foundation on first and then apply their concealer after. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's not an issue. But I am going to just reapply here. I love the tapping as opposed to the pulling. It just, it feels good too. I, I like hearing that. Yeah. Putting makeup <laughs> on a face is a beautiful and wonderful experience yeah. and not a torture chamber. Yeah. This is all about making you look and feel beautiful. So, and remember, makeup is a way to enhance what you have as opposed to hiding or putting on a mask we want to really enhance our beauty yes right, let's take the word camouflage beautiful. out of the equation we're not yeah. hiding we're actually emerging. We're emerging i think makeup is about a woman enabling herself to emerge as the person that she sees herself as yeah. you know and i just like to say for me a woman becomes more beautiful beauty is not an age okay it's not it's there's forever. no expiration date on we beauty. all have seen those beautiful portraits of great photographers taking be peter Lindbergh, yeah. taking beautiful photographs of 98 year old women 
And it's breathtaking. So beauty is not an age, people. But so no matter what age you are, you but you can at any age enhance your looks, emerge from to the person you want to be. And be vibrant. Be vibrant through Absolutely. makeup and play. Absolutely. Okay. So we've. We've done a little concealer under the eyes to brighten that up, and we've done a nice overall foundation. But Don's not going to let me out the door until I've got this freckle cut. Oh, no, honey. So <laughs> I'm just going to use a stick concealer. And uh, this also happens to come from Smart Cover, and it's just an even more pigment product. And you'll see that just a couple of taps with a tiny... This is what I love about these small brushes. Yeah. And you just lay it over that. If you don't want to see it, I think it's cute. <laughs> I do. I think it's cute. And then just with your finger again, tap. Okay. And this this would work with sunspots, age oh, spots, you can, you uh, birthmarks. Can, uh, mm -hmm. Broken capillaries. People hate those red dots yeah. on their face. And because this is a photo shoot, we're going to... We're going to add a little bit of translucent powder just to cut back the shine. And you know, the, the lights are hot and they bring out the shine. And you know, you can always work this as a great tool, translucent powder, if it's done right, for the evening when you really want your makeup to last. Special occasion when you really want your makeup to last but just keep it to the very light, translucent. Makeup right. Forever makes like a high definition powder. You've seen them, right? They, yeah. they're, they're made to be used for these high definition cameras, which are And so the deadly. secret is it, key, it, it makes your makeup last a little bit longer. That's right. The right powder should pull the makeup out, not suffocate it. Right. Most powders that have pigment have moisturizer in them. And moisturized powder with moisturizer, powder with pigments, it's going to change. Look, at we have a beautiful blend on her skin tone, matching it perfectly. You go and put a powder with pigment in it, you're going to get a shade darker. And that's another mistake a lot of women make, is that they use a match their makeup, then they match their powder to the makeup. You're doubling the pigment, you're going to get no -no. darker. Now, I recently discovered something, and I know a lot I of people these. have seen these around. And I, you're, you're looking at it like, well, what do I do with that? Yeah, I love these. It is so much of a, there's so many fine, soft hairs. It's like, you know, it's like you, it, you almost expect it to start purring. It really feels yeah. that soft. And it feels and great on your face. <laughs> here's a trick to use for that. You just want to brush off not only the excess powder, when, if you're using powder, but it also brushes off just a little makeup that you still don't need, especially relax your face, especially in these areas, the nasal labial lines across, if you're getting any lines across your face. Now what you're gonna notice in the end is that yes, you're, you're blending and smoothing makeup away, but she still looks really flawless. But if you were on your own and you didn't wanna use powder on your face, you can use a powder bronzer a powder blush to mat this down are to just take the areas that tend to shine like the cheek here tends to shine those are where the pores are active the most active this is from smart cover 2 and the smart cover has what they call believable bronzer and they mean what they say it's very believable it's not orange it's not green and it's not gold you know it looks like a lot of color it's very sheer but you always Take your brush and then just shake it out. Tap that off. You don't want anything on the surface of the brush. You want to just lightly touch the face with it. And I like to go, this is the, this is the action right here. Right like that. That not only defines, and look the other way for me, darling. It, this not only defines the cheekbone, but it also refines the chin line. So that's a great little, you know, it's emotion. Think about that as emotion. I love it. Feels yeah. good. And we'll just, we'll just add a little bit to the temples. This is going to give Dawn a really nice color, especially with her. A glow. Her tone. Look at with her eyes. It brings the color of the eyes out. She's got this beautiful 
sunlit brown hair. It, it, it all just goes together. I mean, you look gorgeous with that bronzer. I love it. And it's a great Thank way you. to use a cream makeup, very light, and then you're adding another tone, but at the same time, you're, you're setting those areas that do get shiny the most, the T-zone, you know the areas. So there you go. Another tool that I've discovered from Smart Cover is what they call a glow stick. And it kind of is that old trick of putting your lipstick on and kind of bouncing it off your lips and tapping it on your cheeks. I do like to marry cheek tone with lip tone. I think it's important. So this just, give me a little pucker. And I like to just tap that on. You can see right away. Pucker you up, can baby. see right away how that just, not only it's very moist, so it's a great way to. Yeah, it feels oh, good. Oh, it's beautiful. And then you just Because we want take, kissable lips. Right. Now, um, I know a lot of people have heard about this, but this is how it's done. Right. It's called a lip, cheek, and eye color. Right. All in one. Put it on this part of your hand before you start, just so that you kind of don't have too much on your finger before right. you put it on. Because right. once it goes on and you're, oh my God, what have I done? Start light. Go easy. And just get a little smile and just tap it over the top of the cheek, just like that, on each side. So that just gives it a little oh, it, uh, it's highlight. That where, yeah, where the, yeah. it looks dewy. It's dewy, yeah. it's got a little built-in, you know, thing that activates a dewy look. And, and the wonderful thing about this too, and a lot of people suggest it, I've done a little bit already, you can see on the eyes, is go ahead and bring a little color up to the eyelids. Yeah. I mean, I've seen this with celebrities where oh, they do that little bit of highlight absolutely. on the upper, the cheekbone. It's yeah. such a great trick because first of all, it, unity always comes in threes. It really does. Any designer will tell you that. You know, if you're going to create an accent to a room, it's usually done in three places. So that's what we've done here on the face. We've got it, the lips, cheeks, and eyes have a real unified look to the coloring. I'm going to curl the lashes now because I want to see things evolve as they're going. This is a very simple, make sure you've got a good solid pad in there. You don't want to have that pad accidentally fall out. You'll break your lashes. So you just, I'm just going to get it right on there and touch the lid. And I'm going to hold that for one, two, three. Okay, now I've got a good curl. Now before I go to the other one, this is a great trick. A lot of people will say, well, I curl my lashes and then I do my mascara and everything falls back down. That's because you're using a washable mascara after you curl your lashes. Oh, interesting. I didn't know so that. So what I found in, with this Maybelline, with the tiny little brush, it says waterproof, but it, you, you use so little, it'll come off with the first wipe of your makeup remover. But it will set the curl. The principle is this. If you had curly hair and you spent all that money on a blowout, would you go back and spray water on it? No. There you go. <laughs> Washable mascara over a curled eyelash that wants to grow down is like spraying water on curly hair that's been straightened. If that makes sense? Yeah, good to know. So I'm... you can see that I've really set it. And not only that, I'm really seeing her eyes evolve already. If you're doing your makeup and you, you think that every stage of your makeup is has to be ultimate. No, it's going around and doing it. That's why I started with the brows, then I've added color to the lips. And you know, it's really, she's looking pretty finished. So then you hold, then, then you know you can hold back. You don't have to, you know, people start with their eyeliner and a lot of shadow and everything. By the time they put their mascara on, they've got too much makeup on their eyes. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I, I kind of like this. And this is just a set I can al always add another coat. And here's the, here's the good news. You can use washable over that. Okay, so now we're gonna start working on the eyes. We've got a really good foundation. We've got beautiful glow to the face. We kind of spiced up the lips and certainly brought in the brows and curled the lashes. And what this gives me is pretty much a map of where I wanna go with any further enhancement. She could walk out right now and people would just think she looked glowing and beautiful. Who's that girl? Who's that girl? <laughs> and so, this is about accentuating the eyes. Now, I can show you a lot of techniques that will make the eyes look beautiful, more open. Um, as a woman gets older, she starts worrying about where to put the liner. It's not going like it did when I was 20. Um, basically, my suggestion would be either to use a very fine brush, 
with a nice gel eyeliner. I'm going to use brown on her because I'm not going for anything blackish here. I think mascara should be the only thing black on her makeup today. And I can show you where to do the liner. You can also do the same effects with matte shadows. Just take a fine brush, put a nice deep matte shadow along the lash line. I'm going to start with a brown gel eyeliner. And I'm just going to wiggle it on my hand a little bit because I don't want to just take it right out of the jar and try to get Which that Which a lot on. of people do. Yeah, yeah, right. And then you end up with something that... This is one of the things, ladies, that I love about makeup artists. They do put things yeah, on their hands. This is my palette. Like to play around. That's, that's where I put almost <laughs> yeah. everything before I put it on the skin. Okay, so look down and I want to just... I like to do this um, as a makeup artist. I don't work on the eyes closed. They're always just looking down because if you'll close for me, Dawn, look at the difference. Look how everything pinched together. When you look down, it's a beautiful, relaxed line. Now, when you're doing eyeliner, you always want to start from the outside in. Right where the lashes start, I'm going to lay a nice brown, almost like a little wedge right there in the corner. I'm not gonna go all the way across. By not going all the way across, I'm honoring the shape of the eye. So you can see that it lifted the corner up. If I go all the way across, I'm back to where I started. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna do that to this side. And again, I'm just gonna start at the outer corner right where the lashes start. And I'm just gonna bring that right into the center. And you see, now I've got her eyes are opening up at the outside corners. If I go again, if I go all the way across, I've defeated the purpose. I've, I've lost the effect of lift, you know? So, okay. Right. And this is a great daytime look, as opposed to if you were doing a nighttime look, that would be a, a different way of application. That's right, Don. And if I go into the corner of the eye and I go all the way across, but I still want that lift in the corner, I'm gonna to have to lift that outer line up higher. And that's a, great, that's a great thing, and maybe I can show you at the end how to just finish what we've done as a day look and then transition to, to an a evening night, look. That would be kind yeah. of fun, right? Yeah, Let's absolutely. do something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I, these gel liners are fabulous because once they dry, they're set. They're done. You got you need makeup removers, the only way to take them off. And that's good. Makeup removers all designed to take mascara, liners, all these things. Don't be afraid to use something that says long wearing. Yeah. Don't be afraid to use something that says waterproof. Because there are they're, they're, they're so good at makeup removers. In fact, they've taken over there's more makeup removers than there are hair. Well, I think people are nervous. Store. That's why when right. they hear waterproof, they're afraid, oh I can't get it off. Right. But there's great stuff. But there's out there great now. stuff. It's yeah. all expanding because that's what people they don't want to wake up with that raccoon eye three yeah. days later after they've had a big event. Yeah. I'm gonna use these neutral colors on Dawn because I really think it's nice to do a beautiful eye where you don't really see a lot of what you've done. It kind of blends in and just kind of, you know, I'm working with color tones that kind of match into the, you know, the deeper tones in her hair color, also her brow color. So it has a, uni a unified effect. If you like to use color, and a lot of women do, can I just talk you into maybe using a colored pencil, say just behind the eyelashes? Maybe you're wearing a blue dress and you yeah. want to wear a little more blue eyeshadow. That's fine, but just keep it confined to the, the, to the lash line. That I, would per be my I personally love these these uh, tones, these sort of earth tones, you know. I'm going to start with my pale, almost vanilla. You know, it really is just a matte shadow, and these are great to as an eyeshadow base. They'll matte the lid down so that the colors you use on top will glide on more evenly. This just gives me, you can already see, just a, already opening it all up. Let's start with the matte, because this is the hard one. Yeah. This is the hard one. Okay. The thing you want to remember with your face, and I'll illustrate this on Don by, by uh, pointing out, look straight ahead, by pointing out that as Don's got older, now I know her a long time, as she's gotten older, this has, has dropped. Okay? Which is a natural thing that oh, happens to everybody. Listen. Yeah. Beauty is not age. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. Any age, age is yeah. beautiful. I just want to show you what you can do to open that up and soften that up just a little bit. Okay. And the best thing for that is matte shadow. If you're using anything shiny, it's it's a little it's confusing. What you're doing is tricking 
everyone's eye into thinking you eye is a little more open now. Yeah. So what? So we the do, shiny would take away from that. Yeah. The shine has a great purpose, yeah. but not for this. Yeah. This is really. I'm going to show you a little bit exaggeratedly how where to place that. Okay. Always look straight for me so they can really see. I'm lifting the lid just a tiny bit. Don't go yanking it. Just lift it a tiny bit, and I'm just going to pop it right there. Just there. And you can see when she closes her eye where I put that. I prefer to just use the, the mat. The mat is your indelible area. In other words, it shows up no matter what else you do. Matte shows better than shine, okay? And they say, oh, just do the crease. No, I like it very specifically there. What I find really interesting, and I'm sure a lot of the viewers uh, that are watching this, you know, I'm not closing my eyes while he does this. So you want to make sure... Would you sure close your eyes when you're putting on your makeup? How are you going to do that? You don't close your eyes and put on your makeup. Well, they close one and they leave one open. <laughs> Which is actually not a good idea. Yeah. Because you want to get it even. You want to always check as you're doing it that your eyeshadow is blended. Now you can close so I can really show them how this shape is evolving. Mm -hmm. I'm blending that right over my eyeliner, getting that whole thing. And then one trick I like to do as a makeup artist is have my girls look straight up. Now you can see how that, how far you can take it. You can see that you can actually blend that a little bit across. Now look straight ahead and show them how that looks. Now you see the difference? So again, look up. Now I'm going to blend this across. And then this is the best blending tool in the world, is the pad of your finger. Yep. I like to take that and just... Just blend. Blend right. it out, but you can also taper that beautiful... Right. You see what that's done? It's just tapered it a little. It gives it a little bit of that cat eye, and our women love that. And I love that, you know, like, I don't have to go get an eye lift or eye surgery. You could do these little tricks to really well, open that eye area. Listen, and uh, listen. Surgery, I'm, you know, it's all fine. Yeah. But let's face it. Oh, no judgment. It's just no. that there's things you can do with what makeup. It is. You're yeah. taking a part of yourself away. Yeah. It's age. Beauty is not an age. So if you if your eyelids are falling, it's okay. Yeah. It's beautiful. The yeah. lines are beautiful. All of that is gorgeous. Age is not. Beauty is not an age to where oh my God, it's over. No. It's never over. Never. It's a I think soul's we talked journey. about that earlier, but yeah. I just have to re-emphasize that re this is a stunning woman. I've known her for 35 years, and she just gets more beautiful to me. Thank you. I and love the lines. I love this woman, and I love what she does for this yeah. world. She's and really I have no judgment against anybody doing any surgery or Botox or any of that. Um, I just haven't had it done because I love to learn the tricks and tips that Joseph is showing me so that I could just feel beautiful with the way I am aging and who I am. Right. So now we've got that mat. You know, we've got a nice sock to the eye. It's been really defined. And what, what that does is because it's matte, it doesn't reflect, it takes the eye in. Now I'm going to add a little of that same tone, but this has a little bit of reflective quality. And the reason that I like using this is because it goes on much smoother and much easier. Right? It has yeah. a little pearl in it or a little iridescent because I'm much smoother and much easier than any of these matte shades will yeah. ever do. But I can further enhance. So if you'll look down for me, you can see it also really lasts. The matte shadows do crease, no matter what they say. They do crease. This is going to do basically the same thing as the brown but this has some reflective quality. So it's always soft yeah. and sheer looking. So you can see what, what this step has done. And because it has that reflective quality, it's not going to right. crease like the other. Well, yeah. it's not that it, right. It, it, it's just built to be smooth and stay smooth. Where I find the matte 
does tend to crease. It's, it's lacking yeah. something, and I wish I knew because I don't uh, yeah. manufacture makeup, yeah. I just use it. But I love it in here because I think it looks very, it, it, it's a more blended look. Right. And I can go all over, and it, particularly on Dawn, you can see the shape of her eye really calls for that kind of, that kind of look where you can really fill this in. And it just takes that matte, don't go to the end because I want to keep that to where my eye sees the most pop. But you see that that's almost the same color because this pearl, pearlish, has that kind of iridescent quality to it that it reflects lighter. Okay, now I'm gonna get into my slightly brighter, beige, kind of a little bit of a champagne, I could call that champagne. Oh. And this definitely has, definitely has a little bit of reflective quality. In fact, more than a little. So I want to be very, very careful not to mess up what I've done. But I like to get in the corner of the eye. Look way up for me. I like to just sort of lay it right on the tear. Oh, that's interesting. Right. Oh, yeah. This just... Is this like an old Hollywood trick? Because I've seen this on some of the... Uh, it's a great trick. It. And a lot of people, a lot of makeup artists have done this and known this for years, but some women maybe aren't aware of that. But that's what I'm saying. Take I, a really pretty, yeah. bright I didn't shine know that. right in between the eyes. It mention. draws a little interest to the corner of the eye, but it also makes the eye look more awake somehow. Yeah. I don't know how that exactly works, but it's a great trick. And yes, it's been around for a long time. Um, but to me, I love the way that looks. Now you can also, if you feel that you have, if you have, well, now look, I've given Don's eyes a lot of openness. So I don't want to start closing it by adding something shiny up here on the brow because that'll just yeah. throw it all back down. So where have I got to go that I can use a nice bright color? Is right, look down, is right in here. And that's what this is for. It just opens the eye up right in there. So now I'm gonna go back at here to finish her eyes with my matte creamy shadow. And all I wanna do is just accentuate the highest area under the brow. I don't wanna go down further because I've done this, I've gotten this to really swell and appear to be more open mm -hmm. with the matte brown. So I'm gonna just lift that and where the bone, you can see the bone and the brow, I'm just gonna tap that and that's gonna just open up the brows, lift the brow even more. And that should be done with matte because it blends into the face contour is better when it's matte as opposed to being shiny. Yeah, and it just under the eye, yeah. uh, eyebrow. Just under the eyebrow, not down to what we've done. Yeah. You can see that none of that, none of that uh, shadowing on the, on the brown part has been touched because we don't want to lose that impact. I'm going to come back with the gel liner now, even though it's still doing, it's still got its effect. It's made her lash line towards the end of her eye look thicker and fuller, which is where it lifts the eye up in the corner. Just because you put eyeliner on doesn't mean it has to look like you have eyeliner on. But here I'm going to show you how to just make it a little bit more dramatic. And you can see that I've just reinstated it. So now it is absolutely a liner. It hasn't been blended over with shadow, but it's already there. So this should be a really easy step because you're really just look down to a close. Look down. Now remember, the further in you go, the higher you go at the end. And can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, so the brush you use, it's, it has to be very thin, right, at the end? To Absolutely. Get that really if you have a, line. If you put a thick line on and it's yeah. not right, it's very hard to reverse. Yes. If you put a thin line, here's a trick. Yeah. I'm using a thin brush. I'll show it to you on, on this side. If you'll just tilt your head to me and look down. Here's a trick. 
you, you can actually draw it where you want it to finish. I'm going for a much more dramatic line. Now you see, it can still be filled in down here, and that's easy. Filling it in, that's easy. Yeah. It's getting that top line. Don't try to do it from the base. If, you, if you're not good with it, because your eyelashes get in the way, right? Yeah. <laughs> you put that liner on and your eyelashes are making everything a train wreck. So go, go above. Drop that in like that, like so. And then all you have to do is fill in underneath. That's the way you get a more dramatic. Now you see at the end, I'm gonna pull that up just a little bit. So here to get it fully across, you just start very, very fine in the inside and you just glide out and then as long as you stay tight towards the middle as you're coming out you can lift that all the way out to the end and that will still give you the appearance of one line so we had a really soft day look going there's no question but I've gone and made something pretty dramatic here you know and Don does love to do. still look pretty glamorous yeah. right like I don't hold glam. back why are we holding back on yeah. the liner so I, I gave you some pretty full glamour liner there what's happened there's two ways to look about it, look at this yeah. we need to balance it a tiny bit underneath just to kind of balance a little bit under the eye now in order to do that you would never use anything as dark as a liner right no you never, would, you, never you might go with a medium shade with a little bit of iridescent in it of uh, of an eyeshadow. So I'm going to go back to my palette. Our beautiful and you see, our palette. Our beautiful palette. And as you can see, I have the matte brown. I'm not really, don't want to close the eye off, but I do want to uh, define underneath just a little bit. So I'm going to take this beautiful brown with a little iridescent and I'm going to start a little bit short of the end of her eye. Again, I don't want to close this off. And I'm just going to bring that around a little bit, not all the way to the inner corner either. Just going to brush it right about in that area. And what that does is that opens up her eye, but you really don't know why. It's just all of a sudden it looks just a little bit more open. Let me do that on the other side. Remember, not all the way to the end, just short of the end and not all the way to the center. You are the master, I must say. Here's another great trick if you really just want to ex uh, soften and open the eye. Go back with a little Q-tip and just soften and blend it. This is not a line per se, anything but really. If you do a soft shadow, look up for me and just blend it, it just imitates how the lashes would create a shadow. Now, we have just a little bit of a space here with her eyelashes. So there, I want to do want to take my gel liner and just add a few little dots to just look like where the lashes aren't really growing on their own, that'll just fill that in. Just right there, but again, never to the end. And there's nothing wrong with using your finger. It's such a great blending tool. Once you've got, the, once you've got what you want, particularly underneath, whether it's concealer, liner, shadow, anything, it's okay to use your finger. Yeah. That's where you want it to be the softest. Because it's the so soft. The lashes kind of absorb all of this yeah. monkey business <laughs> we've done to the eyes. But the underneath really needs to look blended. When it comes to mascara, I like to start on the bottom lashes. And the reason for that is that if I do the tops and then I go, I'll have to wait for that to dry before I can do the underneath. So a, a good makeup trick for a makeup artist is right. to start underneath. That way, while it's drying, you can still work on the top lashes and you won't be spotting. 
Okay, look up for me. Now you just want to get right at the base. And again, I love this small brush because you can get right in the base. And just, you know, the bottom lashes don't have to be uh, spidery and thick or any kind of a heavy 80s look. Just, just get a nice little touch and then take, take your eyebrow brush. This is very important. And just kind of soften that, brush that out. Okay, again, now on the other side, just rock that at the base, just at the base. It's never putting a mascara on the tips, only at the base. And why is that? Well, because you want it to look natural, but you want the effect. So I'm not saying don't use mascara underneath or use the one coat. You do it till it looks good. But one of the ways to keep it looking natural and blended and part of the, the, the scheme of the face is to use your a, a little eyebrow brush. Even if oh. you keep that separate, a dry... Make sure you know, it's they dry. Also, they, yeah, well, they make, um, you know, mascara things that you can use yeah. multiple. If you have one of those lying around, it's a little tool, and you just, I would brush over that mascara. So now you have a softer effect from the mascara, but it's really doing it. Mainly because we laid that in, in the, it, with the... Um, with the shadow underneath. You see how it doubled the look of the lashes because it's emulating the shadow that the lashes would make if they were thicker. Great to know. Yeah. That's a great tip. So now for the uppers. This is always the, my favorite uh, part. Is it really? And it's probably the model's least favorite. It's their favorite effect, yeah. <laughs> but their least favorite part. I'm going to pull up and I'm just gonna rock and pull, rock and lift rock and lift. You want to get that rock at the base and pull it up. And this is a bigger wand than what I had before, but I've already established the curl and the eyelashes, the way they're going to yep. photograph. I mean, pardon me, the way they're going to look? look. Beautiful. Don't look up. I can't wait to see how this looks. I could already just feel it. Yeah. Feel that. <laughs> that ooh la la. Yeah, it's like when you put your heels on, yeah, right? Yeah, it's that ooh la la. It's like when the heels go on, you're like, okay, I'm ready. So I always love the way you've done my hair and makeup. And I've worked with Joseph for many, many, many shoots. And I always feel so beautiful when he does my hair and makeup. Because you really are the master. You have so much experience and you really know what you're doing. And I, I think really if you appreciate love, you. Yeah. I think if you love doing something, you just have to get better at it. Yeah. And, and you love and it. And he's very mention, humble. Well, yeah. I started at a good time. But I always When it wasn't really, we really had to build it from an art, artistic yeah. point of view. There was that. There was that. But I always feel beautiful after you do my makeup. Okay, well, I, I think we've done enough to, this, <laughs> to these <laughs> eyes. And I think the effect is beautiful. Now, the important thing to remember about lip lines, I know everybody thinks... Oh, I wish my lips were fuller. I wish my lips weren't thin. Especially if they want their upper right. lip. Right. Yeah. One side yeah. is higher than the other. Yeah. I may not be universal in my philosophy, but I really believe that it's part of the character of your face. And I don't really do. overdraw it. Don't compensate. Over. Stop, yeah. stop altering who you are. Yeah. The beauty of this girl's lip, it always has been, and believe me, from experience, I can tell you, trying to overdraw her mouth that they end up retouching it back yeah. to what it should yeah. be. So I'm just going to do what she's got. I just want to define it. As we get older, the color between the skin and the lips starts to blend. And it seems like our lips are much smaller than they are. So if I could get you to tilt up, I'll show you where, what I mean. So this is really as far as I want to go. And I know that seems like sacrilege that I'm not going to overdraw her mouth. It doesn't work. Give me a little smile so I can get some tension on there. There we go. That's all I want. And I'm going to give it a good, I'll fill it in to make sure that it holds. I love doing lips. It's my favorite part. It's my, it's my mascara is the lips. And I think lips are beautiful. But I'm not going for a large upper lip. And here we go. But Dawn has a very distinctive bottom lip. 
it's a it's like right you know what I mean mm -hmm. it comes around full so you'd almost say well don't you want to balance the top lip to the bottom lip and I say not if it interferes with the natural expression it's built into the face we were designed there are no mistakes people mm -hmm. there are no mistakes we were designed to be exactly the way we are mm -hmm. we can accentuate I love color on the mouth when I was a kid my mom would put lipstick on I thought I died and gone to heaven smile for me and I just sometimes you can come back with your makeup brush and just kind of buff that line back just so it kind of blends into the face a little more you know if you feel like maybe that lip liner looks a little heavy a little dark and just buff it down with your makeup brush I also like what you said like God makes no mistakes you oh, know it's your there are no mistakes is, and yeah. believe me it is truth it is absolute truth Dawn could be the most gorgeous person in the world, but if something inside of her was just so disagreeable and so unhappy and so mean. bitter and yeah. mean to the world, that's no beauty in that. Yeah. In fact, I don't, wouldn't be able to make her beautiful. So here, I'm just going to stay in the... I'm going to even a little bit more neutral here, but this is a beautiful kind of... You could see kind of a cocoa plum. Oh, I love that color. Isn't that gorgeous? I yeah. think it's beautiful for you. Yeah. And I'm going to open a little bit, give me a little room there, and give me a little smile. But That's the girl. I want to start right in the middle. I don't want to go to the edge. I want to I want to fill in the color, put the color down, see where I'm going with that. And then when I, if I like it, I'll go back in and blend it a little bit over the pencil. As you get older, one thing that's good about using a pencil to line your lips is that it holds the lipstick in. If you're just using lipstick and you have any amount of lines around your mouth, it will, depending on the lipstick, and you know, the ones that don't run, like matte lipsticks, how are you gonna use that? A matte lipstick will dry your lips out, and the, how are you gonna use that? So yeah. it, a pencil is a great trick to giving you the line you want, you see the shape you want, and it holds the lipstick in from the lines. Mm, good to know. And I'm just going to brush that. I'm going to brush that right up, particularly the top lip. You can really avoid the bleeding if you if you use a pencil. And this is where all the a lot of lip running happens. And another place that it happens a lot is in the corners of the mouth on or, older gals. You see them doing that all the time. You know what my advice is? Don't put pencil, don't put lipstick, don't put anything there. Leave the corners of the mouth empty. So, I mean, here's the old trick. My mom did it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you just blot and then reapply. And that's another way to keep it from seeping out. Well, I think we've done it. I think we've done all. We can do. Uh, I think you look fantastic. Oh. Let's see what. Let's Michael. take the hair down so we can get some idea of a final effect. Yeah. So that was a complete makeover, huh? That was well, a complete. Well, no, uh, this is not a makeover. This is just accentuating, pulling all your best features out, and then get, and then just popping it, just absolutely popping it. Well, I feel beautiful. Thank you so much. I always feel fantastic when I work with you. Plus, we have a lot of fun together, yes, we do. don't we? Here we are at the end, and we've had a lot of fun doing this with you. Okay. I hope you learned something. Um, Dawn's a beautiful girl, and uh, I just want you to know that... Thank you. I hope some of these tips will help. Um, Dawn is a natural beauty. This is not an altered face in any way. She's kept it natural. And um, so I think every woman can look beautiful at any age. Um, and just like embrace an, your beauty. Embrace oh, your own natural beauty. That we're all unique. We're all different. Like flowers in a garden. Mm -hmm. We all come in different shapes, sizes, colors, backgrounds. And just embrace and love yourself. And that's what I think it's all about. Right. Embrace and we've gone beauty. from a day to an evening look yeah. uh, to interject with makeup again. Um, so there might be some tips in there that work for some women and not for others. Don't feel that this is the beginning to end tutorial that you have to do everything I do, but I hope you picked up some of the ideas and the tips and the logic behind applying makeup to look beautiful and finished in the end. Thank you, darling. Mwah. Ah.
Okay, let's say goodbye to our. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for watching. And I won't it too long or too <laughs> uh, I Joseph, never shut up. Thank you, Joseph. I love you so much. Uh, don't forget to subscribe below if you have any questions for us. You know, please write below. We would love to hear from you. And uh, thank you again for watching. We really hope you enjoyed this. Bye bye.